Hello, in this lecture, we'll go over how to use the CVOT REST API. We use a pull interaction model in which the user sends HTTP requests. You send the server data, the server performs a set of actions, and then it responds with some new data. You can find documentation about what data to send and what data will be received on the documentation page, which is linked at the bottom of this slide. You can also find the API's reference and schema, which tells you similar information. Here's an infographic. The server has many REST API endpoints. They cover most, if not all, of the server objects and provide a number of operations for them. The endpoints are grouped by contexts, tasks, projects, users, etc. For example, when we log in, we send a post request to an endpoint in the auth group that includes our credentials, like username and password. The server logs us in, creates an entry in the database representing the action, and responds with a key. This key can be used in subsequent requests by the user to identify themselves. This pattern, where the user sends a request, the server performs some actions, and the server sends a response, applies to all endpoints. Let's briefly touch on authentication. The credentials and keys I mentioned are part of the auth system. Accessing server endpoints requires authentication. There are two ways to authenticate, basic and token-based. Basic just means sending your username and password to the API slash auth slash login endpoint. After you successfully authenticate this way, you'll get a key or token that you can use for subsequent authentications. And that is token-based authentication. We recommend using token-based authentication for better safety, since you don't need to type or send your credentials with each request. You can find more information about authentication at the link at the bottom. Here's an example of how to create a task in CBOT. We start with logging in. The user sends a post request to the login endpoint containing their username and password. The server then responds with an auth token. Then we send a new post request to the tasks endpoint with our new task configuration. We can see the fields for this configuration on the API reference page. Once the server creates the task, it responds with a new task object encoded as a JSON document. Then we send a new post request, which includes new task data, such as images, videos, point clouds, etc., to the tasks endpoint. The response we get should have a 202 status code, which means accepted. The server will then process the data, which could take a few minutes. Finally, we send get requests in a loop to the tasks ID status endpoint. Previously, we were sending post requests. We send these get requests until we get a finished status. Once we do, we can expect that the task is available for annotations and other operations. Note that we can also receive several other statuses, including failed. In this case, we can find the failure reason in the response data as well. Here's an example showing how to export an annotated task as a dataset. First, we'd log in by sending post requests to our login endpoint in order to get our authentication token like before. Assuming we have already created and annotated a task, we would then send get requests to our task ID dataset endpoint. These requests should include a few parameters, such as the format we would like to export our dataset to. The response to our first request should have a 202 accepted status meaning the dataset preparation has started on the server. Just like the previous slide, we need to wait for the server to prepare our data. We need to keep sending the same request until we get the 201 created status. At this point, we should add the action equals download query parameter to start downloading. The file we download will contain the dataset with annotations. In CBOT, there is interactive documentation provided by Swagger. You can experiment with requests, explore server APIs, and read documentation for endpoints. Here's a preview of what it looks like. On this page, we can see all the endpoints the server provides, with documentation, schema, and examples for each endpoint. For example, we can see all the login endpoints input parameters and how it responds. Using the tasks endpoint, which is right here, we can get the list of tasks the user has access to. With Swagger, not only can we read the documentation, but we can also interact with the server by sending requests. Let's try getting a list of tasks available to me. First, we would configure our input parameters, which is all of these parameters. Then I would hit the Try It Out button. And finally, I would hit the Execute button. 
When I hit the execute button, the server performs the request and then I receive the response. Below is the contents of the response. In most cases, the responses are JSON encoded structures with several fields of useful data. In this case, the response includes a header and a list of tasks, each with a number of fields and task properties. It's also worth noting that this endpoint works for me because I'm logged in. You will probably need to log in using the authentication endpoint. Don't worry, all that requires is just entering your credentials and then hitting the execute button. For homework, I encourage you to experiment with the Swagger API. Test out different endpoints with Swagger or a tool like curl. Write your own script to create a task using Python and the request library. Have fun with it. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.